Welcome back, viewers. This should be a barn burner. Rustlin versus Max. The Siberian Express versus, what is Max's nickname? Maximilian. Maximilian, I did not know that. This is the uh, first break I've seen from that side of the uh, table. I think it's by and large just player preference, whatever you're comfortable with. And he played it like super perfect. Killing the ball after four rails, putting it down on the end rail. Doesn't appear to me from this angle that the three ball goes. So we may be looking at a safety here. Just like that, two rails, what a beautiful hit. Not so easy to do. He's headed right towards the pocket or thereabouts, but he's okay. Speed would have been, <laughs> even if he had headed, headed straight for the corner pocket, he would have been okay. Not seeing anything workable in the stack, so. Well, he's looking at uh, a three ball combo. Well, with a, without a referee being currently on the spot, the players have to come to a mutual agreement. Ooh, he went for it. So if you're not on that feed, you can't go back to it, right? All right, it looks like he's gonna draw into these balls off the five. He should be headed in a direction where he will have the two end balls. Nope, he's thought better of it. And with that ball in the jaws of the pocket, uh, he had that for a safety no matter what. He may also have the brown ball.
thinking he's, he's going to drop in on that 13 ball and clear that out. After he takes this ball off the end rail. Or alternately, he could uh, go into the group of three. Oh, he went forward a bit. Okay, so now he's created an opportunity to go into that group of three. Perhaps attempting to leave the two as a potential break ball if he doesn't like the nine. He's going to do that. It looks like he can take the eight. And the angle must not have been good for him. Can nudge the 12 out of the way here. Leaving the one ball. his break. All right, guys. It's Bobby Chamberlain back in the booth here with Lou Figueroa. Thank you, Lou. Are you favoring the nine or the two here, Bobby, for a um, break? Oh, no, definitely two ball. Definitely the two ball. Hmm. Yeah. Did yeah. you say that because? One, one eight, nine, uh, 12 in the side, bounce out for the two. So um, because it's lower, it's m the nine is high. Yeah. Um, you want to have the favorable shot is to be like within um, like a ball below the table spot where the rack would be. Okay. Uh, and the nine is a couple of balls above the spot. So I like shooting, again, going through the process here of shooting a nine and getting angled to the 12 and then pumping the cue ball out mm, sort of like where it's at now, not that far and a little closer. So the, the, the fact that the, the position on the nine is a little more forgivable there's perhaps a greater area you can play to 
doesn't well, factor in. You, yeah, you, and then you, with the nine ball on the break, I mean, it's it's high. And then when you go into the rack, you're less likely to know where the balls will be. Uh -huh. will, will splatter to or the control the cue ball. I see. Okay. I mean, the, the two ball is not an ideal position, but it's it's but it is you know better. And I always have the idea is whenever you get to the position here. If you could have ball in hand for your break shot, where would you want it to be? So that's what his thought process here in the 12. Now the problem he has with a 12 here. Um, is uh, bouncing out here. He's got a little angle here. Well, the ball should come open pretty good. Oh, yeah. Watch out for the cross side there also, right. the key ball. Cross side is in play, but he's okay. okay. Wow, those, these balls really busted out. Um, what, what he lacks, though, is he hit them so good. Everything went past above, the, above and below the break areas. But he's got a few things he can work he's out. He's got uh, no problems here, I think. Probably not what he wanted, but that combination is not too difficult. And he can draw it back. No, I don't know if the one passes, so he may be playing to the 14. Now here he may have an opportunity to manufacture a break ball. Well, depending on the angle, he can. The one off the 15 would be best. He no, did push he the six. He got the six. So now, um, you know, he's got to be a little bit careful. You know, they are playing all ball fouls because he's obviously going to be shooting this 13. Or the, I'm sorry, 13. It looks orange. <laughs> it's the nine. Okay. Then he might turn back around here and shoot the eight in the side, possibly. But, you know, he's got to find an angle here to get to the. 15 and 1. He might take Can the 15 right now. No, I think he's going to shoot the 8. And then he's going to be looking at maybe the, you know, somehow leading to the 3 ball to get to that ball. But no, he's going to take a wide angle on the 15 here. So he's going to shoot the 15 and, and draw back. Pocket the 1 ball in the same hole. That's a, such a nice stroke. Folks, what y'all don't see is when he's shooting and leaning down, he has to go underneath the table light so he don't hit his head. <laughs> he's six <laughs> foot six. A lot of these European guys are tall. Okay. Now, this is going to be a little bit strange here because what angle could he fall by shooting the 10 next to get up table? Because the 11 does go on the side. So uh, he's going to have to shoot this ball, and he's going to have to use some some bottom left. I'm um, sorry, bottom right. Oh, that must be for Virginia. He's got to try to get to the other side of the table or all the way back past for the side pocket for the three ball. Be careful. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Mm -hmm. 
He knew it the second it got close to the middle of the table, and he just backed away from the shot. And that's the problem that he That's has. the problem with when that When he shot, had a ball yeah. in the back reel, he should have eliminated the 10 at that time so he wouldn't put him in position to, for the ball, the cue ball to travel so far for his next shots. I, I'm really surprised that, uh, you know, and I know the theory is that you, you want to shoot the shorter shots, but if he got behind the the 11 and the, uh, what is it? The, the, the 7. The 7. I mean, straight in down the the rail that is not a difficult shot for for these guys especially but almost any pool player i mean and that would have got given them a lot more in terms of options well you know here's where where it happens okay once you my thought process is once you've got the upper tier of, of balls cleared out the three was kind of not quite upper tier is more upper middle a little bit <clears throat> because i believe in a picture frame clear your outers so you leave room for the inner balls that are in that are inside. So you make more pockets. And what he did there, and, the, and once you clear the table like that, you actually um, look at a table being a square instead of everything being horizontal. So it's like this. Okay, now he's got he's got my my art thing here. And see, the ten was at the bottom, the three was at the top. That was sort of the outer range. He should have got rid of those balls early. So you don't you don't believe in decongesting the middle of the table or the, the rack area, taking the opportunity to kind of air it out, so to speak. Well, the way to air it out is you got to make pockets. Um, and the way to make pockets, you have to clear the outer frames so that way all the balls have an alley to go to, to, go to the pockets. But often the balls on the rail are not obstructing the balls in the, in the rack area. And you've got... You know, say uh, a majority of the balls still in the rack area. You don't, you don't subscribe to the idea that you should air that out, decongest it, and then go to the frame. Well, I like trying to clear the clusters out. Um, once you have an initial break shot, try to clear them out. But the problem that you always got to think is when you have a cluster, Lou, is you don't want to go into a cluster where you can push balls and create another cluster sure, or two right. balls together. So that's why I like to leave those inner balls kind of alone until I clear some of the outside balls because when you get toward the end of the rack and you have two balls stuck together you're not going to be finding many angles that you can break out those two balls or three balls that you push back together and it's going to disturb your break balls and other things There's, you have to limit the variables of things that can happen and, and try to simplify the game well even beyond that you've got to think the shot completely through uh, it, it's not just about pocketing the ball and, and playing position you know if you, you start playing with the other balls on the same shot, you've got to think through what, what what's going to happen to them or what are you going to do to them. Kaboom. It's going to be way back there. He's got the 13 on the side. Not too bad. So the question now is, where do you put the cue ball after it comes off the 13? So he's OK. You can take the 8 now. anyway so now he's looking at a combo to kind of break up that group of five mm. Mm. I don't think that's the ideal way to d deal with those but he doesn't have a whole lot of options 
He's getting very limited at anything right now. He mm -hmm. might be able to back up and, and break he them can, up he off the two He can shoot the two ball. and follow through right now. I mean, well, shoot no, the eight and follow go, through. Go, go to the side well, rail. Uh, well, I mean, if he's playing the combo to break out, he hit perfect. But what he's got to do when he shoots this, he needs to shoot this and hit it with high ball and push the five. Right. Because the five will follow down. But the problem he has, he got to be careful of. Right. Okay. He should get a shot in the four, but when he's pushing the five down, remember he's pushing the five down there, and the twelve's going with the twelve's going with it too. Right. I hope he's thought this through. Good. Freddie the Beard always used to insist that players do whatever, take whatever amount of time they needed to to think out the shot in its entirety. Uh, he, one of his favorite sayings was, "If you're going to be a bear in the woods, be a grizzly." Uh, when you shoot a combination or, or or a difficult shot or a challenging shot. Think it all the way through because it does you no good to be a hero making the ball and ending ending up tied up because the other balls have done something to you. So you're telling me Freddie Ventavia knew more than just bank, banking balls like a superhuman? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're trying to tell me? Uh, I really liked Freddie, actually. You know, we didn't always get along or agree, but, you know. I, he was a rough guy. I, was, I liked him. I liked him a lot. And I'll tell you what, some of his, uh, if, some of his commentary – uh, that he did at the U.S. Open when it was up in Kalamazoo. You can still find these older Accustats matches are are golden because uh, he was quite the raconteur and he would go on at length and tell the funniest stories. I mean, uh, occasionally he'd get to the match, but uh, they are just uh, a golden treasure, some of his stories uh, and the way he said it and everything. And, of course, he had that thick Chicago accent, so... Uh, a pleasure to listen to. If you if you got uh, nothing better to do, dig those those older Kalamazoo one pocket U.S. Open. I think he's got a book available yeah. called Banking with the Beard he's or a video or something. Two, two volumes and uh, well, a his, couple of his DVDs son, to go yes. with it. Yeah. yeah, he's passed on. Yes. Yeah, that was really unfortunate. Okay. Well, remember the key thing here. He has a seven ball up table. You need to think about. And he's felt funny with this 15, so right. he's, but he's he okay. He's got other options. He's, you know. Well, you know the thing about it is uh, the 11 ball's high, the nine ball's better, and he's not gonna. He's taking the nine out. Uh, we just had a brief conversation that came over to us. Um, what he's in it, and I got mentioned a few things. where the Europeans don't care which side that they right, right handed where where they break the balls from. A lot of them are taller. Um, where you know. We do care more, but the thing uh, is, and the, and the Filipinos shootings. generally care a lot. Well, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, <laughs> and, and I got it. And then, well, the key thing here is that they don't mind the, that their break shots are above the table spot. Right. That is so unconventional for me. Um, I don't really have that thought press too much. But if they start getting above the the break area, I start thinking the side pocket break shots. You know. And then they just pound it in. Well, he didn't like how he fell here. This was important that he had a good angle for the 15, so he didn't have to work so hard getting into it's the... It's okay, though. He knows this shot. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's got well, he's got two choices here. I mean, he can uh, just follow this with high left and come out two rails, and or he can draw it. You know, I personally, <coughs> I like going to two rails. Me too. Because that way, if he falls short, he still can come back and go three rails around to get to the 11. I mean, if he falls long, I mean... Uh, just about perfect. Just about perfect. Well, no, he's got a little angle here. It's not too bad. Um, he's got a tough decision here. I mean, does he go one rail or does he take the three rails and then have a, a, a shot where the cue ball is um, still slightly past the side pocket? He's drawing it. At the, well, that's going to even pass the side pocket, too. Uh, see, I think three rails he kind of got a little bit better. This is one of the tougher break shots for because of the length that we've seen in a while. 
you know, Steve Mesrak told me something years ago. He was telling me he didn't mind having shots with the cue ball back by the side because it it, cre it he created more energy, and he was so right. accurate. He was making all the balls anyway. I um, it's, it's I'd like to be close as possible. Me too. It's not so easy to be so brave on these diamond tables. Now that was interesting. Did you see he measured that off the side of the object ball as opposed to the I side? I saw him of the doing that earlier too and, and what do you think that's about? It looked like he was actually trying to measure the length of the shot. <laughs> huh. No side angles here, just straight top angles, but he's going after it. Watch the watch the side pocket with a cue ball, please. Don't want to put a jinx on him. Oh, he had enough on it. He had enough. He had the woodpecker stroke. Where it just keeps on bouncing into the rack. Now, he wants to hope this four ball goes. If it does, um, they're going to be looking to make sure you do, don't double tip this. Because shooting the, shooting the 15 or 3, you Lou, we discussed this earlier that they're playing all ball fouls. I don't think he likes the four. I don't think he has a choice. Yeah. Well, I, well, I don't no, like that choice. No, 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 no. But we've all done it, right? Jack, I think. Jack, Jack Duff, I think he's going to go back and look at the. I think you. I think he's going to circle back around and look at the four one more time. He's going to consider it. The 15 is just not that tall a hill to, to climb. It's, it's well, not that tough. I yeah, know he's yeah. jacked up, but it's it's not so tough. Well, it's apparent for sure the 12 doesn't go. So we're looking at the, the 15 or the 4. I think, like I said, I thought he would look back at the 4 again. I'm going to be surprised if he goes. Well, if he does, the referee is right in line. He's going to take a look at this shot. Yeah, he's all over it. It's going to be tough for him to get his cue out of the way. Who's taller, Alex or uh, Carl on Kansiewicz, the, the referee? All right, we're right on top of this. And the light's coming into play. Looked okay, but he missed. He avoided the foul, but he missed. I think he should have shot the 15. We've all done that, though. I think we're Moscone giving a Massé exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to pick one player to shoot that shot that is in this facility, he's not playing a tournament, I would have had to pick Mike Massey. Oh, right, sure. And uh, I love Mike. He's uh, he's here in the building, but he's uh, he's not playing. He actually signed up for the one pocket event at the International. Hmm. So he's making his rounds. He's got the largest hands of any pool player I've ever seen. Well, did, doesn't he have some sort of challenge about how many balls he can hold? In well, hand? yes. Um, he had bet that nobody could put nine balls in, in their hand at one time. And then somebody from Europe did it, so Mike now does. He started doing ten. Take that, Europeans. You small-handed Europeans. Take that. Uh, I was amazed that I can put five. Don't know. He's got the, he's got the side pocket. I guess we would lean a stick on the table. Okay, guys, I know the match just started. Um, we had about 700 people there in the last match. Uh, this is a elimination mat they all are at this point. Let me go ahead and elementary this here. Click the share button. Da -da 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 -da. Share with all your friends, folks. Let's try to build this up. Get as many viewers as we can. Help all these sponsors out if you can. You're looking to buy something. <coughs> Support the sponsorship.
can you tell if the uh, 13 is in the red? Well, you mean the 15 it is from this angle. <clears throat> Down this, this one right here. I'm, I'm it's using out, my it's, telestrator. It's outside. It's outside, okay. It is good to go. He he shouldn't bump another ball here. I don't, I don't see how he could. He's got to shoot this ball here. And, and the, what he's... What he's looking at, I'm telling you, I think he's thinking about leaving the one ball here. I would want to take the 15, but I think he's considering the one ball. I don't know why I'm going out on a limb right there, but I'm just looking at how this is. Because, see where the two balls at there? Sure. Okay. He can't shoot the one, then the two. Okay. So, he's got to find a way. See, because... What I had liked before he hit that ball was to get an angle to where you can get to the 7, the 3, then the 15 for the break. He might have been trying to go into the 2 there. Well, right now, he's got to make sure he falls really good on this 15 ball. Or, I'm sorry, it's the 9 ball. All right, well, he's going to take a little breather here because um, here he's going he's gonna to shoot the 9. Or he's going to shoot the three. Then he's going to get back to the center of the table and try to get straight in for the seven as, as the, the key ball here. Even though he has a seven right there next to him, he's going to leave that ball. Now he wants to fall kind of really like straight in here on the seven ball. He's fine. Little angle here. Now, yeah, okay. now he just wants to draw back. Just maybe about a, a ball. That's about it. Uh, not much. That's a little far. I don't think he wanted to come back that far. No. Can you translate that? Google Translate is your friend. What word? Uh oh, I'll pass. Okay. Smash. Yep. And he's all right. Does he have the 11? I think he's got the uh, three. Well, if he has a three, he can go one more, one more crack at this. And, yes. and the 12 might go up to two for a break area. And watch the nine may slide over a little too, to toward the seven. Both oh, things, both that. things happen. Okay. Now I don't know that he needed to hit him that hard. No, no. He might. He'll take a look at the six and see if it goes. He's not sure he's going to shoot that, but he'll take a look at it. It's missing part of the pocket. The problem with shooting a six is, you know, he can't. It's hard to kill the ball for the fourteen on the next shot. So I think he's going to turn back around and shoot the eleven. Yep. to do what to do yeah that's right now he might see if he can squeeze that six in. Well, he's trying to figure out what to do with the uh, four and eight and how he's going to approach well, those. Yeah, well, the first thing he needs to do is, is to clear the six out and so he can make room for the ten, too. 
So he needs to go, in my opinion, he needs to go 6 and 14 and just clear that real quick. Um, I don't know how he's going to get there. He may not have the right angle. So he may have to go to the 15 and fabricate an angle going over there. I don't even think he sees the 5. He sees the 14. That's what he wants to get out of there. He's not even looking at that 5 in the sun. He's going to drag those two rails. Trying to get toward the center somehow. That was a little weak. If he had hit that a little harder and got straighter, he could have shot right. that nine in and then uh, kill it and then play the eight in the corner and, it's, and then the four and it solved a lot of his problems. Leave the seven as a break. You know, I, I picked earlier, I said, he might leave this 12 ball as a break shot. You gotta think, um, I guess, you know, he's so tall, it doesn't really matter reaching for balls. Well, the longer he waits, that, that nine, eight, four, 10, I don't see him shooting Masses his 12 ball right now. I mean, he might, but I just don't see it. I don't know why he would. I, I think he's he can easily take one of the, I mean, he's the gotta balls be, off in the middle. He's got to be looking at the nine ball or a side pocket shot. Take one of the sides. It's got to be one of the side pocket shots. Take one of the side pocket shots and regain position. He can do a lot with that two ball. He can, he can put the cue ball. He's got all kinds of options with that two ball. That six has still been a, a thorn to him this round. Right. All right, now I can get to the nine. Now, I'm thinking the eight passes the ten. Oh, uh, this is going to matter now. Yeah. Well, he's leaving. Looks like he's probably leaving uh, over here. He's, he's going to try to take this combo out I'm now. He's, ru he's running out of room. Now he's just shooting this. He's got to make sure that he gets to another ball, so he's right. going to draw out of this. No, I think he'll just gently hit it. All right, he had a he had an angle that the ten fell. So now what do you do? Well, you can get an angle for the nine aside. Um, yeah, the problem that he has is if he, can, if, he, if he comes up here and taps the seven and barely hits the right side of it, he can hook himself. There's if a lot of things bad that can happen here. Yeah. He really like to get an angle to where he can so he's got to clear this four ball out. What do, you, what do you think about taking the ten and going to the side pocket shots so that you can get on the seven? No. And then, and no. I, and because he's so close in this area right now, I, I mean, I think he's going to have to finesse this. He's got to try to get an angle to get to this four ball. I'm going down for one of those side pockets. The f well, okay. Good call. I, I still like him. And then I'm getting the seven ball, and I'm coming from behind at those balls. Well, if that's the case, then then if you're coming up there, you're going to grab both these balls, not just right, one of them. Right, right, right. Okay, so he's gonna if he's going to do this. He's got to figure out the determine. He's got three balls here. He's technically got four balls he can use for a break ball. But the one thing you don't want to do is go into anything. Well, it's almost like he's considering going. No, he, he's not. I'm just pinch this. Well, Holy I, cow! I didn't. I don't know. He's fortunate. <coughs> that didn't have to work. Yeah, you can play the four ball on the side now. I mean, don't, I mean, don't, you, don't you get rid of the eight ball? Don't well, get, or I, I like shooting the nine in the side because the angle in this, you would tap the eight and then push that forward, play the eight, come up and play the five, four, and then there's the seven ball for the break shot. I'm shooting the eight. I think it's a great opportunity. Uh -huh. It's not so tough. You got the four ball. I think he's going to play the four yes, in the side right. pocket and okay. go two rails with a cue ball. And try to fall fall flat on this five. It's too hard. It's too hard. Now he's got to come to the bottom he ball. Might have the eight. And well, that he's got to play the bottom ball. Yes, the eight. He's got the nine. Maybe the seven is the break. Depends upon how he falls here. He's in good shape now. Oh, wow. Well, he's going to have to just shoot and stop. He can and do whatever and he shoot wants. the seven and punch out one rail to the nine. 
If he shot the nine, he, he's had the hits ball pure and come up and down. I think he's going to shoot the seven and punch out against the rail. Trying to get parallel to the nine, and he did. And here's, a, and here's another high, high break shot again. You would think with pockets that tend to be a little smaller, you definitely would consider having your break shots closer. Sure. But I think at, at this level of play, what is closer is not as close. <laughs> I think the definition of closer expands with this, this quality of play, this quality of player. Should there be a limit that you should be allowed to uh, play if you're only so tall, you know what I mean, too tall? He has no problem ever reaching a shot. This guy is tall. And not only that, he's playing with a Q, which is 58 inches, plus about an 8 inch extension. So he's playing with a, uh, about a 65, 66 inch Q. Nice. Look at that. That may have been the best break I've seen all week. Um, <coughs> you know, it just makes life so much easier when they come apart, when you, when you make them come apart like that. Yeah, 15 balls, the only really big issue here. And he's got a little little something going on with the one and four ball here, um, which could be a little tough. He might come with a combo his first shot. Well, of course, we don't like combos, but I think he might come with a combo his first shot. What do you think? Uh, he, he might not have any other choice. How about that for accuracy? That's pretty accurate. Not a bad time to take the one ball out. One ball's low-hanging fruit. Nope. Yeah, you better think about it. So I guess he's going to clear these balls down here. Now, <coughs> again, um, I didn't like that, but I guess he's well, he's going to go ten to the fifteen to the uh, he to might, the he might something go to the else. Fifteen now. It would uh, be a good time to do that. Yeah, 10 to the 15. Nope, he's going he's backwards. He's going 10-8. Ten, 10-1. Ten ten Never mind. I'm really surprised he's leaving that one ball there for so long. Just refuses to shoot that one. Mm. That's in it now. It's weird from this angle too. When once you get to this angle, I'd want to get rid of one of these three balls, and the preferably I'd rather have the four because of the threes closer to the rail. But he's going the other way. So he's decided at the end of the rack he's going to go 15, 11, mm -hmm. two. Yep. So that's going to be. So he has to be shooting the four cross it over to the side of the table then roll up a little bit don't get straight he's he looks good here Lou. It looks great it's kind of hard to mess this one up okay he's going to come off the rail naturally yeah he'd like to roll forward you know right, about a, a six bit. inches to a foot Perfect. okay Oh, oh my goodness. shoot. I almost said a bad word, actually. He lifted right up on the shot. What happened? Did he stand up? Yes. Yes, he did. Shucks. So I had 12 into a score. 
They may not post it now, but it's going to be 61 to 20. Well, with the uh, the 11 ball so close to the side, he's okay. That ball is in so deep in the jaws that it's easy to hit a corner of the pocket and have the cue ball do something you really don't want it to do. But I think he's going to be okay. Of course, you know, once again, they're so tall, maybe he can just reach out and draw it. Using the using the rake. It's deep in there, but <clears throat> he can just hit the side of the ball and come one rail because, you know, basically the 11 a hanger. But he does want to try to get the cue ball toward the center of the sure, table if he sure, can. But He's drawing at it. Nicely done. <clears throat> he won't shoot and stop here. He's got to try to get uh, this cue ball out. Um, don't get too cute. You know, it's okay to be near the side, the, the middle of the table lengthwise. But he, do, he will want to draw this, this cue ball about a foot out toward the, the middle of the table. As such. Just like that. Now you're going to see some balls move. <clears throat> I saw a break we had similar here earlier, and, and he pounded them, too. I wouldn't pound this ball, but I would hit it three quarters for sure, 70%. Yeah. And what are you doing with the cue ball? Oh, I'm hitting high ball. Okay, right. He could hit this ball with like a stun high. Also, now this ball is, it looks like the cue ball is slightly left of the two, which brings your thoughts in if he hits in, into the second ball I, here. I think he's going to he do what he did before. He's going he's gonna to put a lot of follow, overspin the ball, and uh, make sure that way the side pockets don't come into play. It's something on the cue ball. Yeah, they have a referee here. He just wants to clean the ball. He almost did it with a piece of chalk on his own. That would have been a penalty. And the players meeting to discuss to get a referee to do this. Well, just, you know, s small increments can make such a difference. Now, if he hits this with, you know, with an easy ball or even, or even a really like a 90% stroke, he brings a scratch into play because the cue ball he is a little bit to the, from our angle here, while well, well, y'all's angle on the screen, left of it. He's going to put enough follow so I would hit. I would hit. He's trolling this ball. Well, let's see if smash him. Huh. Well, he got the one ball in play. <laughs> well, there's no doubt you take care of your business here on the top. Checking to see whether that 11-4 is dead or makeable. Drive the Volvo.
Do you think he's considering the 12 and 9 now since uh, he fell a little funny for the 10? I think he wants to get rid of the 10 ball next. Yeah. If that's the case, then he would want to fall straight on the 7 so a little bit so he can get down for the other two strikes. Oh, he's fell short. stripes over here right yeah by the table spot it's nicely done he fell really good here yep Straight to the seven ball. Okay. Here's where it gets a little tricky. Once he shoots a seven, you see he has a triangular pattern, but it won't quite be a stop and go. He's got to roll this here, shoot the, then shoot the twelve next, get an angle for the nine. So the trick here would be that <coughs> he doesn't want to fall short. Because then he'd have to go in three rails shooting the nine aside and have a longer break ball. So he'd want to actually come close to straight in, but he actually he'd want to he'd want to go past straight in. So the words up near where the the head head string line would be. Just right. A little straighter he wanted to be. over a little bit. Mm. I'd take that break shot every That's day. That's really nice. Okay, so mark up another 14. 61, 36. <coughs> finger on the cue. And, uh, I've been playing a pool quite a few years. I've never seen anybody do that. How about you, Lou? I, I, I don't understand what calculation he's making. He's trying to figure out the degree of the angle. I mean, it's it's pretty simple. Just smash into the side of the rack about as, about as hard as your strip will allow you. Um, ooh, ooh. That was almost disastrous. not to shoot to 12 and back cut to five and push more balls around that's like two break shots there so so here's that decision Lou I mean uh, if he can shoot the eight and this and get an angle to where he can get that six ball out of there or possibly the 13 right. going to the other side I think that would be he a good solves option. a problem right off the bat 
think you can do it. It appears that he's a little more straight in than he wanted to. He can he can stop that problem of shooting the two ball and go and get him a different angle. This is no, this is no good. Yeah, no, 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 no. He's neither. Let's see the other end. I think the six clearly goes in. He's going. There's the problem when you have multiple balls. Well, you can't eight. control them all. <laughs> now the eight. Now I don't think the eight goes now. No. See what he's going to do? Play another. He's going to play another combo. And the six will be going on away from the pocket slightly. It'd be hard to hold, but he could get an angle where he can end up playing the six next. But he have to. I think he might have to come above the eight a little bit to get there. See, okay, he's fine, but now he's tied up another ball. No, the 10 has no home. So again, I right, would go eight and then six. Create to get rid of that problem. Okay. So this is a situation where his height really comes in handy. He can reach that six ball pretty easily. Nope, guess not. He's tall, but he's not that tall. Oh, Ruslan could reach it for sure. Yeah, he's not ready for the NBA. Well, ideally, he would like to get, you know, in the open where he can start clearing something. I mean, the 10 ball is going to end up being a problem, but um, he will only shoot the 6 and. See if he can f if he can manage to to would like draw a bump out for the fourteen. Would it not be better to to wait on the six perhaps because because he's got to use the bridge uh, to reach it. It's an awkward reach. Would he not be better to uh, Shoot take the fourteen, the 14 leave himself an angle? Well, he's just taking care of the problem now. I, I mean, he may draw into the ten with a little bit of power draw here too. Okay, okay. he was able to bump out. Okay, that was a tight, a tight area there. I'm just thinking he could have saved himself a little potential turmoil there. Well, he could very well be thinking, uh, get rid of another one of these balls here. And uh, bump the 15 uh, out or get rid of the 10. Left a 15 ball there, and it was easy pick off. So he has a game plan here. Yeah, yeah I think he wanted to get. He, he wasn't comfortable with those two balls so close together. It looks like 11, 10, bump out for the seven on the side, roll for the he 12. Might take the seven next. Roll for the 12. He's going to shoot the 7 and to go from the 10 to 12. He's going to be in the draw angle. He is right-handed, so he'll be able to reach around <coughs> from the side of the table to shoot the 10. <coughs> well, he'll come from the end of the table from there. I had liked uh, shooting that shot and getting straight in on the 10 almost. Well, he's finding himself an angle that if he can't quite get straight to stiff it then he's gonna have to roll away from the from the uh, the break area here see so he wants to try to get straight in from here he's, he's okay he's gonna have to hit a heavy ball do you think he'll go into the back rail here Lou no These guys don't mind shooting past the side or high. No, uh, that's what I've noticed, and that's why I, I felt comfortable saying he would not go to the end rail. I, I, they don't like to do that. 
they're 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 fine. And being a diamond past the side pocket. A little extra distance is not an issue. Maximilian the Crusher. Well, I see uh, one major, major problem this rack. It's the two stripes on the right rail. Well, if he wants to shoot the three ball, he can take care of that right now. Mm, but the outcome, maybe not so certain. <coughs> he might, he might open them up, but what would be his next shot? Test, test, test. Can anyone hear the commentators? Stephanie for letting us know. Get there. No, re no reward. He can turn around, shoot the 11, and almost get back there again. But then, you know, if he doesn't get into him, he's going to. Well, no, he would have the 6 or 10 as a backup. He's going to consider this anyway. It'd be tough to, to try to <coughs> do it off a draw shot like this because you might just send them into each other again. Well, if he can draw in between them, that would be what he wants. But maybe he'll shoot the 6 and go one rail back into him again. Mm hmm. It is. Boom. All right. Well, now he gets you to live. Now he's fine. He still has a little problem here with the 8 and 13. So he's showed no signs that he doesn't worry about shooting a combo. And uh, he's, he's going to have to be looking for a break ball. I guess that behind the, behind the well, rack 14. Yes, work. that's right. right. This I don't know. I don't know why he did ball, that. Fortunate yeah, he's, well, he's, he's lucky to do that. Well, he's got an angle for the eight ball from that angle. Not really. That's all he could have been thinking of. Uh, I'm not sure what he was thinking. And I don't know that he has uh, the side pocket for the 11. 
He's still going to go on the 14 and then play an 8 13 combo. Very unorthodox uh, decisions, but he's getting it done. He's getting it done. He, he could bounce the eight off the end rail for a break ball. Um, I think, yeah, it looks like he could. It and leave the 15 on the side. I'm not sure it's going to have enough energy to quite get up that high, I but we'll see. Uh, you want to hit the combo a little soft. Mm. <coughs> He's still got here. He's been just gnawing at this bottom of this table here. That 10 ball is no fun. He's going to have to deal with that. Would you would you uh, entertain bumping that 11 ball a little bit so it uh, becomes more available as a well now it's gone but I mean uh, a side pocket break. Oh, he went to the end rail. <laughs> Finally, I think he's looking at getting a shot on this uh, eight ball from an angle. Going into the back rail to go into the stack for his break shot in the next rank. Probably one of my least favorite break shots. <coughs> I don't know about you. I don't like going in the rails at all. Especially the back of the rank because there's the ball of energy, the energy, and if you get close to the to the uh, center of the rack, you're mm -hmm. stuck at the bottom you're of the rail. You're going against all the weight of 14 balls. This is tough. And if you get a ball free, it's not always great. That's what it looks like his decision is. That's it. Well, well, he wants to position himself so he can get to a corner of, of the stack, right? He's going to be up three balls here. It's going to be 64 to 61 after that. Um, it's pretty good. It's about as good as you could hope for from the, for this one. That was a fatal mistake when uh, it hurt a lot when Ruslan hung that 15 ball a few racks ago. Dean, your question would be straight pool would be much harder on a seven and ten foot table. People will have their differences in opinion, and I'm going to tell you, the smaller the table, the harder it is. If you can see it, the congestion that you would have, it would just require too much ability. Um, I, I'm going to fight against everybody in the world here. There's no way the nine foot table is the best size. Ten foot is is, a, is too big, and uh, the seven and eight foot tables both. I'm just not good for straight pool. He got stuck. He's stuck. It's a six ball. That, that happens so often when you when you're coming in and off a rail. Any chance a six ball is in play? No. Oh. I mean, he's dead. Lou, I don't, he's dead. I don't know what he can do. He's got nothing. He's gonna. He would shoot the two ball and just put the cue ball in the back rail, and or so he's got to try to get the cue ball hidden from the uh, from the four balls that are loose. The best he can do is leave it on the end rail, as frozen yeah. as he can get it. Yeah, I agree. I just don't see how he's gonna get frozen. Uh, I mean, into the stack. <coughs> Well, I think you, you, you try to leave it by that uh, left corner pocket, don't you? 
Well, you can also hit the two into the ten and push them up table and okay. to, into the left okay. side of the table and then put the cue ball on the back rail. Absolutely. So that way you'll have coverage from the nine and three automatically, and hopefully the the two and ten don't have any angle where they can be shot at. That's a good thought. You're right on the Look at playing this two ball cross side. Are you serious? He wants to keep shooting. Here, like I said, here's the two and ten. Bump them both. Cue ball on the back rail and try to get as much coverage as you can. The, the ten That's pretty good. The ten leaked out, but he does that long shot. So th the back of the rack is covering three balls. He was hoping that it covered all four. It's break time. Okay, guys, the guys, the players uh, have agreed to take a very small break. Do not leave. Uh, I didn't miss anything because they're not going to take very long here. And we're going to take a small break here at, at the uh, control booth.
Okay, folks, we're back from the break. What a good shot. What a good shot to come with. All right, we're all back. Might want to think about breaking him up off this three ball. There it is. He didn't baby it. <laughs> no. Nowhere near. Possibly here. He's going to take care of those balls on the rail, at least one or two of them. Hmm. Yeah, the 13's in a little tricky spot. And as tricky as it is, that, you know, it's a key ball that he can lose for the f five, but um, I like a two on the side when he gets to that point. So he should get rid of his 13 soon. He overhit this ball. He overhit that. He didn't want that. So he's got to look to see if the 14 goes. I don't think he'd want to shoot uh, the 11 and bump a ball. Maybe he can shoot the 11 and uh, well, he might bump the 14 here. It's a better spot. No, well, okay. Well, the one ball's a little low. It's workable though, Lou. It's workable. So. Balls to the side pocket here. Absolutely. I wonder if he wasn't thinking about bumping that one ball just a little bit uh, further down the table on that last shot. And we'll be an elevated here, and naturally he's going to hit down the ball a little bit. I mean, do you think he's going to go ahead and go to all the way over to the uh, to the 14 next, uh, or he's going to get to the 13? Uh, so he wants to shoot the 14 and draw. He's got to get to this 13 ball. He's running out of time. I would have thought he would have played position for the two or the seven so he could take that ball off the rail. He's going to commit to doing it now. Well, you, you draw back for the two on the side? Yes. Not him, though. Hitting a ball that hard, knowingly, mm -hmm. that you need to get an angle. Right. So he could have very easily shot the two here and gone to the five. Andre, Andre again, hit it a little. Now he's got to hit this ball and hit the ball again. He falls short. And with this ball being this ball being a little bit low, okay, he's not gonna, he's going to be cutting it a little bit. It's a little tricky. And give a shout out to Jason Trigo. Good to see you on the stream. What an incredible straight pull player Jason is. Watch out, everybody. Virginia born. 
Jason, I hope you're excited about the news that we launched off to you earlier. In case y'all in case y'all didn't know. I'll tell you after the break shot. He needs a kiss. He needs a kiss. A six ball. Yeah, six I ball thought, saved him. I don't think the ten is there. Ten would, ten would have worked though. Well, we've had a lot of events here, Lou. Virginia is on fire right now for no pool. No kidding. You guys are the envy of the pool world. Last week we had the probably the biggest women's money match in the history. Twelve thousand dollars in the middle, twenty thousand dollars on the side between Pia Filler and April Larson. Two really nice girls with great attitudes, very sportsman. Uh, great sportsmanship. Uh, then follow that up to this big event here, the biggest street pool uh, tournament in the world right now. It's WPA sanctioned and just a world championship field. And it had, it's probably 15 world champions in this tournament. That's really great that Peter was able to get the uh, sanctioning. And also we, for the first, we have the first women's also American street pool championship. Uh, and, that, and the women are, are just, I think they practice more than the men are. They really got the place filled with practice. Um, so that we uh, leave this event just 10 miles away. We're in Virginia Beach now. Um, the last week was in Gainesville, Virginia. Virginia Beach this week. Uh, then uh, we go right to Norfolk, um, to the Norfolk Waterside uh, Sheraton Hotel. Are you going to get a chance to uh, go over and see some of that, Bobby? Yeah, I believe so. I'm going to be going to the Hall of Fame banquet over there, too, I believe. Uh, so then we, uh, what's over there now? That's uh, They're having a uh, $1,000 a man one-pocket event, a thousand $1,000 entry fee, that is, $1,000 entry fee, 10-ball event on a 10-foot table. Hmm. Both of those filled up in about five seconds. <laughs> And then a uh, 128 player nine ball field uh, nine ball tournament, which is a double elimination. Wow! What exciting news! Uh, then there's a, another tournament uh, at the, I believe it's called the Wolfston, uh, in the Roanoke area. Shane Wolfert and uh, and his father own that. Uh, really nice players. They're trying to do what they can to try to uh, good people try to do what they can to help pool. Um, Shane is an incredible player. His game has stepped up a lot. He, he could play with anybody. Really plays good. And then uh, <coughs> uh, I believe that tournament is going to over there, I think, starts uh, around the 7th or 6th or 7th. Um, oh, no. oh, actually, I think it's the 6th and the 7th. I don't think that was the way to go. And then uh, November 2nd, Lou, uh, we got a little news there, don't we? Yes, we do. The, uh, but before, before we get to that, let yeah. me ask you, you also yeah. mentioned an overseas tournament. Well, some of the players are going to the Euro Tour after the international. Um, so um, there's a Euro Tour, and some of their sponsorships they they have to go. Uh, it's mandatory, you know. Um, their sponsors is what helps them pay for their travel. Um, the I know some of the women uh, players uh, that were in the country had to go for the Euro Tour. Uh, Christina Takash, what a phenomenal player she is, and. Uh, She's, over, I believe she's over there. I don't know how long she's staying. Uh, wish her well. She's a great, great player. Um, and then uh, November 2nd, let's get back to that. Yes, let's get back to November 2nd. Um, we have uh, the Legends of Pocket Billiards. Look up on Facebook, everybody. Got some exciting news. Um, we're going to have women and men come in uh, for different events. Of course, we're going to support 9-ball and 10-ball and 8-ball and 1-pocket and whatever else. But we are uh, focused on right now is... Um, for the women and men to come into uh, into our event uh, one at a time, five days to 30 days at a time, to try to break their own personal high runs and maybe even farther uh, and uh, try to get some uh, legitimate uh, official records. Um, and you just you just uh, heard from Shane a few moments ago that yes, uh, <coughs> we had uh, we had a player scheduled um, for November first. We had to move that a little bit around here because. On November 2nd, we have uh, eight-time world champion Nick Varder coming and do clinics for three days. Um, so, uh, but on the 2nd, um, we had we had a player scheduled the 1st, and we move, we're moving him to the next week, which uh, that player is the player playing right now, Ruslan Chenahal. And then um, 
After speaking to Shane yesterday, I told him what we had going on, and he immediately says, um, please schedule me. He wanted to be scheduled, um, and I told him that we had uh, the week of the 8th available, and um, he decided um, if I could get the schedule switched, he wanted to play right after the International Open because we're only three hours down the road. Um, and he's very excited to play. Wow, I mean, he's really excited. Uh, and we're excited to have him. I mean, Captain America, it's our, Amer it's our number one player in America and one of the best players in the world. And, you know, I didn't know that Shane really played much straight mm -hmm. pool. Um, but uh, after watching him, he sure proved it. He ran a 2.10 uh, in his first inning uh, of the first day. You know, so uh, he's definitely proved his ability. Um, I believe his high run is 3.20, Lou. So um, we're shooting that he uh, hoped that he breaks his high run of 320. That would be nice. He's the, the kind of player that has the, uh, the discipline to really stack up a huge number. I'm really going to look forward to, uh, to watching his attempts. Score. Um, yeah, so uh, anyway, go to the Legend of the Pocket Billiards. Like the page. It's the only area that you will get to see the uh, the videos of uh, players playing. We uh, share streams, so there's a lot of streams that people can't get. Uh, we share content as much as we can to help support uh, all streams and, and all forms of pool. And uh, we're just really excited, Lou, uh, um, to get it started. It's uh, been a long time coming. And uh, excited that we have Captain America, Shane Van Boning, as the first player in the Kick box. Kick it off, yeah, that's awesome. So stay tuned, folks. Okay, here we go. Scores are up. He's he, okay. 88 to 65. <clears throat> I think that he's going to immediately shoot this 14 ball and take, a, and take another <laughs> crack at these balls. Uh, if he doesn't, then he's going to he's gonna have a shot on the 14 because though it's so thin, he has nothing to stop it. He would have to curl around the table and, and play a side pocket shot next. I think he's going to go right back into these balls with a little bit of force, too. Well, he's still, he's still got a six-ball cluster there. So at this point, uh, the ten ball is a good good ball to break those out to. Um, does I mean, the four pass? It looks the four does. Um, yes, the four will pass. Um, he, can be shoot the, he can shoot the eight ball here and, and basically stop and, and get to the 13 or, and, or shoot, the, he can shoot the three and then come back to a two. It's a lot of movement, um, not knowing if this eight ball goes on the side or not. Such a tight match, you definitely want to keep this cue ball on the tightest leash you can. Guys, I'm not in charge of the... Uh, Neither one of us are in charge of the uh, the screen here for y'all. We don't know what's going on on that side um, a whole lot, but Chris is doing a fine job. He took a, about a five-hour job to get the stream back up after our power outage earlier. Got it done in about two and a half hours, half the time. So we're just fortunate to y'all have a stream. Right now we've had some major storms over here in the Virginia Beach area. So, Chris, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome, guys. Yeah, they didn't have to pay 19.95 a day for this, did they? No, this All is great too. This whole professionals and everything, so man. If you get it free, spawns, you know, send send some money somewhere. Help everybody out. So he ended up a little too straight. So. This is the first time I've ever been here. He, might, this he might shoot the one and, and go with a 15 here, and then he'll. But he don't need another break ball. He has one now, but he's going to be pushing that 10 ball out of the way, it looks like, if he's holding for the 15. And, you know, I would have liked to have a little more angle here, Lou. But he's, yeah. but he's okay. But the way these balls are pointing, it's nice. very easy to get another cluster. He, should, he wants to try to push the six ball down to the, down to the rail, bottom rail a little bit. The sixth stayed. He he he. Think he hit. wanted to keep something in the neighborhood. Well, he didn't hit, he didn't hit high ball there. He just shot and draw back. Now, you know, he's in a little bit of a 
I think he's okay. He's all right. He's kind of trying to cut this ball on the side. It's all right. It's a little draw. Bring it back. Well, you know, this is this is a tough angle to shoot this nine ball from. No, well, what about the it, ten ball? It, take well, take the ten ball, and uh, then you can play the six or the nine. Yeah, well, <clears throat> the problem is, is that the the two the, the nine goes in one pocket. He played the two the other way, but the seven's in the way too. So he still has not cleared cleared these frames to make pockets for every ball yet. Now he's going to be delicate here on the next. Uh, he's drawing back for the. Okay, but that was smart. That was smart. I don't like bumping balls at Din, but that's going to get him there. See, um, <clears throat> he's going to he's got a little tough position. He would like to have fell a little higher for the two, to play the two and six in the same hold, and get an angle for the seven, like where the six is at. Go run rail out to the eleven for a break shot. He don't know if he can do that now, so he's got to shoot this ball here and punch out. Um. It's a little wide to be shooting two rails here, so I think he's just going to go one rail. Well, he did. He wanted to make sure he didn't short. Oh, he has another two railer here. You think he'll shoot inside here? And and if he does, he may not I think get enough two, angle. Two rails is a little bit easier. Yes. And fall just short of the side pocket. Just like that. Maybe That's a little a too long, far. Long ways here. It's going. Stop, stop. See, you know, every now and then, it's nice to keep the same pace that you're shooting mm -hmm. and take about the same amount of times on the shots. But now, when they call it a key ball, you know, like the ball before the break shot, I call it a critical ball, not a key ball, because you really need to make sure that you have the right angles at the last couple of balls, because if you don't advance, and you at this, especially at this level, then, then uh, you let the other guy at the table. Do you have a name for the 13th ball? Confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Desperation. Whatever works. Well, they're going to come apart on this shot. Well, you know that about that. This is a little tricky here, too. I mean, um, you can't use any bottom English here because the ball will, will slide so much before it actually comes into a roll. So he's, well he is actually hitting bottom. If he's hitting he's bottom, low. He, he should not hit this hard. Medium, soft speed. Yeah. When you have an angle like that, so you all know out there, if you have to cut a ball back, if you're cutting a ball and you're having to hit down on the ball, you need to shoot for an overcut. Try. I always try to add into my calculation of overcutting by a half a ball. See any other shot, Lou? No, I don't. I don't. See, the problem is here. He, he wants to maybe use inside to go into a ball to stop it. There you go. Well, he hits I, that so beautifully. I like that, and I don't so like that. So much confidence. I like that, and I don't like that. Well, he needs to shoot the 13, and and uh, here, unless the 15 and 8 both go, he needs to look and see if the 15 and 8 both both can go down in the pocket. So maybe he'll shoot the 14 and come up above the 15. What do you think, Lou? You might go into him. Well, if you do, what happens if you get stuck? That oh, my goodness. That's a problem. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, if you, I looked at the angle, and the the 8 and the 15 both went down in the corner. I thought maybe they needed to get broken up. I was saying break it from the 13. But in all fairness, he, he got kind of unlucky. I mean, he hit it at that speed at that angle. You don't expect this to be the outcome. 
Well, he's got to bear down on this shot. This is the whole rack right here. Ooh, a little bit of an overcut, but he's he, all right. Did he four rail that ball? Mm -hmm. Who's counting? I don't know. It went down in. It wouldn't matter. I mean, are we obviously seeing the two ball for a break ball? Yeah. yeah. So, so we uh, got that part solved. So, so uh, 14, 9, 2. You know, um, I don't know. I mean, Never mind. I'm, I'm thinking 15, 7 here. I think he, I feel like he wants to draw this back a little bit for the 7. Okay. See, the one ball's in a tricky spot, and that's the key thing. You might bump it. No, I don't think so. I don't think he wants to bump anything anymore. No, he doesn't want to, but maybe. The one ball can the one, one ball's going to so be difficult. So what he's going to do is shoot the 13 and then th and then the 3. He's going to come up and fall straight or kind of long. I mean, I mean straight or just short on the 9 to be able to push the cue ball sideways to get a straight-in shot in the one where he can draw back for the 2. He just uh, had a little bit of a skid, so he's asked the referee to come and just wipe the ball down. <laughs> Carl's cleaning the ball. Looks like he's polishing a pair of uh, wingtip shoes over there. He's really, <laughs> he's really <laughs> polishing that ball out. <laughs> wingtip shoes, Bobby. You're showing your age, man. <laughs> well, Carl's tips, Carl's like wearing them, I think. <laughs> Might as well uh, mention the spats or something. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I, uh, oh, oh, he did. That's, no, you know. Oh, no. This no is bueno. a problem. No bueno. No. Uh, he can probably cut into the side and be all right. I wear a, four, I wear a 14 wide. I don't think I find wingtips on those. Or those spats. That's bad. I didn't. Have to use like a tablecloth or yeah. something. Oh my God! Is he really? Is he really thinking about banking this ball he one rail? Be. No, he's, he's got to cut the one. You cut it where? Does it yeah, go on the side? The side, yeah. You know, I don't know. It. Uh, There's no safe here. No. So you think he's gonna cut the one ball and let the cue ball fly? Well, he can predict the path here. It's. Oh what? The, the, the one and nine in the same pocket. Uh, or the nine to the corner behind the two. Which I think is what he's going for, but he might have hit it too hard. It's well, you know, one. he's got to go into the rail, but I'm going to tell you something. At this time of the match, yeah, that was a critical shot that, that he hit very well. You asked about the 13 ball, and what did I say, critical? Right. <laughs> well, that was. <laughs> and he's got to smack this ball into the rail and come back it. out. Boom. A little English to widen the angle. It's a little short. It's a little and short. Gonna quite but he's okay. Yeah, see, if he would have gone a little farther and got parallel with that ball. Right, right, of course. Even as tall as he is. But he would have been able to go into the pack and have a little more mustard on the ball and uh, and get there. So um, let's see if we got to. Maybe he's, he's they're purposely erring on the side of being a little shallow in the angle to avoid a really steep angle. Well, you know, if you got a choice. Well, where to choose that, you can have any angle you want to. But as an angle, if you had to choose one, this is not the one that you want. You can have seven different angles on the ball in different levels, like three or three inches apart. This is the angle that you don't want besides straight in. So he's going to have to try all that he can to go into. The ideal thing, I think, Lou, my opinion would be to try to hit in between the 13 and 14 and see if you can get three or four balls loose. I don't think that, unless I'm not seeing this angle properly, I just don't see an angle that he can get, you know, seven or eight of these balls free. I think he's going to get some good movement off the stack here. I think he's going to have about seven balls stuck in the middle here. Not so bad. No. Well, he's got an eight pack in the center, but he does. Uh, he does got some opportunity here. He's got plenty he, of opportunities here. But he's going to end up having to have something to break these balls out. And, he, and you know what? I would try to get some more free right here. I would shoot this fifteen ball. I mean eleven no, ball. No, no, dread. I draw, draw th what, what he's doing. He's going to draw the seven. I would have shot the 11 right then because he had the angle to do it. Yeah. And then he had the seven down here on, on the bottom a little bit. Good telestrator work. Yeah. So 
Oh, no, he's got to make a decision. He might use the 14 to, to break some out. Drawback right now. And again, he's got that funny angle. This one is a better than his break shot, though. But if you look at the way the balls are lined up, look at the 1 and 8 and then the 11 and 5 or 13 and 5. When that happens, you don't get the, the balls won't separate as much. If he doesn't get a 9 here, okay, he's good. He's good. He's good. He's got a decision here. Does he want to shoot the 9 or does he want to stretch for the 13? No, I think he's, he's, he's wore himself out so much. I think he would just rather have some shots in the open. Say like the nine and the nine, four ball. Nine four. Nine four ten. Uh, the six ball is in a break area. The fifteen's available. All right, here's a nine. now. Here's the decision, Lou. What would you do? I mean, once you get rid of the four ball, the six has a hole, but the eight. The eight and one are kind of in a position where they really don't ha quite have a hole yet. I'd like going into the the one eight. Okay, I like going into the six eight. Mm, not for me. Yeah, because that way you can you have a chance of pushing the one into another I, break I, I area, and then you would have the thirteen and five. If you go up. into the one eight, the eight's going to nudge the six over. Okay. Well, <clears throat> if you go into the one eight, you can go either way. <clears throat> I like going into the 6-8 here um, because you got a chance of pushing the one over. The 15's already in play. We already know that he plays high break shots. I would like to conserve the 6 like what you're talking about and hit those balls. But if he if he ends up moving these balls here, unless he fell right behind the mm, one, he's the got one the, ball. He can, he can bump the one here. There's the one for a break shot. But he, doesn't have a, he doesn't have a ball to lead him to it, though. So, I mean, he might be shooting the three ball here. What do you think about shooting the three ball here and then coming uh, coming around the 15 and getting to the 12 next? No, I'm just going right short and sweet, 315. Okay, he did. But I think, I honestly think he was going, it looked like maybe he was going for the 10 with a speed, but the 12 was in play. I think he might have been thinking about bumping the 15 He's into, a, you know, an additional break ball position. He's going to bump the 8 here. Okay, now, so now he's, he's got, got a key ball. Yes, now exactly. Now that's the language I know. Right. He's set. He's got to figure out when he's going to get to his 15 ball here, too. So well, that'll be the next to last. Well, yeah, the so that'll be the 13th ball. So he's going to shoot the 12. He's going to hit the back rail, hit high on the, just past the second diamond for the, for the angle to get to the 15, I think, next. Got two rails with a cue ball here. We hit one. Boy. Again, another eight. I don't understand that one. Another here. He didn't need to do anything like that. He could go one rail to the five he's or two rails to the he's five. He's got to go for the eight. So makes, it, he, makes his work a little harder. Well, he's got to go eight five, and he really should be going eight fifteen. Because now you have what we call the cri you know crisscross. You got to go cross to the other side of the table from the five to the fifteen. You know, he's probably going to pull this off, but he could have made it a lot easier on himself. Well, that's exactly what I like to see. Uh, I mean, uh, let's say, because that's true. Center the table here a little bit, and he's fine. But the tricky thing is here, you have a break shot on, on that side of the table. And like shooting the shot, he may fall great. But the chance of him falling at the exact angle he wants to for the one, it's not as easy to do. Because right, you're going across the aim line. See, he, see, that's he good. Been, that's a good outcome. You know, he could have been a foot closer. Mm-hmm. I mean, these guys can are going to get out from anywhere, but he made it, that rack. He he butchered it a little more than he thought that uh, it was needed to. But the main thing is he got out. He ran into a couple problems. He overcame. He got fortunate that he got a shot on the eight ball when he got stuck to the side of the fifteen. Like so. So the now he needs twenty. The finish line is in, in uh, order here. So he, if he can break this rack and get fourteen, that means he would need six next rack. So. Lou, like, you know, we were saying earlier, he's not going to need a break ball. He would just have to, you know, punch into the rack and get some balls free, and then um, he can move to the final four. He, he needs a probably didn't enjoy that uh, bump on the three ball. 
back cut the 10. He can do the 10. He can do the 12, I think. 12 on the side if he so chose that that would come up for those balls on the end rail. If he shoots this 10, I think he's going to have to draw the cue ball around three rails because he doesn't want to take a chance at the side pack or, or running into the 12. He is going to run into a 12. No. He's not pulling the trigger. He just doesn't know. I can tell you, I'm going to draw this cue ball around the table. I think or I'm or at least I'm going to draw past the side for the 15 I, ball I like next. I like the 12. I like the 12. That's the critical. This is exactly why I said the 10 ball come in, or 12 ball come in play. There was no way I was going to roll that ball. I would have had to draw the, the ball around. Unfortunate scratch here. You would have been okay with the 12. Fortunski has advanced. Um, y'all a score here because there was a couple of balls there made. How many balls are left, Lou? Mm -hmm. 48, 12, 14 of them. So he made the break ball, so he gets one and he loses one. So the score stays the same then. Right? I believe so. All right, so Max needs um, 85. He's decided to just take a, break, take, a take, break. take a quick bathroom break. Hang on, guys. It's going to be long here. This is really getting uh, getting mm -hmm. close here. Uh, Fortinsky beat uh, Slowinski. Uh, don't know to score anything. That sorry, guys. But um, this is getting down to. I think we have six players left uh, in that area. We have one match left uh, today, and that's the one that's being played.
Okay, I think we're back. We're back. We're back. We're live. I can hear you. No, I can't hear you. No, there you are. There you are. There you are. Now I am surprised he didn't do something with uh, that ten eleven there. He had an opportunity there to. Open those up. He's got three problems. Well, he's got a big problem up table. Yes, There's no that's the biggest that. one. But uh, he's got a big problem up table. Thank you, Tony. Tony Robles. Thank you very much. Signed an autograph ball for me. Well, here you can uh, get two for it. Go right on my wall of fame at my home. My new take home care of two problems so. at once. No, I guess not. Well, Lou, by what you see here, um, that miss that uh, Maximilian had, uh, I, I think that may have, could be it if, if uh, he can find a way to get a break ball in to uh, get the 9 and 11 broken up. Mm -hmm. There it is. There's the break ball. Now, a lot of times guys would like to use maybe the 14 and, uh, and come into those balls. Uh, you know, coming out of the back rail. The problem is with hitting two rails. If you go two rails and break, you get an angle to break in that nine out, mm -hmm. you can get stuck behind the 11. So, and we've seen some people get stuck. How do you, t how do you, what's your approach on the uh, nine eleven? Uh, well, because you have the 14 there too, I'd like to get somehow get lucky enough to get an angle for the two ball in the side pocket. But if you use the 14, you got the two ball left as an insurance ball. Well, not if you come in behind a nine, you don't. Because you can get jammed up right behind the eleven okay. if you come in and hit the enough. nine. If you hit the nine at, at from left right. to right, hit it twenty percent and knock it away. Well, he's got that option right now. Come up behind him. Yeah. If you go into these balls, I'm gonna tell you right now, you really want to go like. The unfortunate part is you got to make sure you hit them first of all. You would want to go between them, but if you miss them, you're not going to have another opportunity. And he's running out of uh, balls down here, so he's getting to where he needs to get over there. Okay. Well, if you're going to do it, maybe Lou, he wanted a better angle, so he, he delayed. Lou, if you're going to do it, you got you, <laughs> you to do it right now. Now watch going behind it. There you go. But here's. They're yeah. stuck. They're stuck. Well. Yeah. This is close. Nine on the side. Yeah. Have a nice day. Wow. There was not a lot good going in. That's why I had liked to try to get an angle from the two. That way you can push the 11 from that side and then you have more going on. But you, don't have you know, but once again, you know, that's, that's uh, an unlucky outcome. Well, that's a nice he's, a, he's a favorite to, to have something better than what he ended up with, but he, he did well. Okay, well, he's going to shoot the five. <clears throat> and lay up to the rail here. He's got, he's got to make sure that he falls beyond the two. You don't want to end up short because if you have him to go three rails to the position to the eight, you're going to have a longer shot, so... Either that, he's going to draw back for the side, then punch out for the two, try to get straight in. There uh, it this is. is where he needs to be. That's perfect. Yeah. Now he's going to have to draw. He would like to draw this ball level to the side pocket, but watch the side pocket. You, you like the ball out. right on the rail there, don't you? Yeah. You want to get, 
Well, there, well, I mean, you, with ball in hand, you're not going to place it any better here. No. Um, we're going to get an update for a score. I don't think Max, I think Max missed his first incoming shot, didn't he? If that's the case, are we, is Ruslan on 144, 44? Let's find out. The guys uh, keep their own score there. Okay, folks, he needs eight balls. And all the, he's going to break these apart, and seven are going to be free, Lou. Boom. Oh, no. Look at here, and the three ball hangs up. What a fortunate roll. You know, if the, if the 13 frees up to the three, where would he go? And the cue ball. Or he could get corner right. hooked. All right. Could have gotten corner hooked. Well, he's going after the 13 instead of the three here. What key did a cue ball here? Again, when it's one okay, of those we're, games. We're, we're running wild and free now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> at the end of the match, I mean, you figure the horse wouldn't smell the hay, you know? <laughs> He's okay here. Okay. He needed seven. Uh, so that means he's going to leave eight balls on the table and advance to the final four, the defending champion. Okay. He wouldn't like to be so tight <laughs> on that ten he's ball. Not, he's not making it easy on himself. He was a little excitement for the fans here at the finish line. Game ball. He's playing for one, I believe. I think he's playing for one. <laughs> okay, guys. The f I believe it's the final four has been set here. Uh, let me go by what I think it is, but I'll, I'll have to try to verify. But it looks like uh, we have Fedor Gorst against Ruslan Chenehoff. And then we have, I don't want to whack up his first name, but last name is Fortunsky <laughs> against the world's number one player, Joshua Filler.